What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about square bill crankbaits. So I was reading in the comments below, you know, everybody's talking about Tackle Tuesdays, how I used to make them, how they enjoyed them, you know, they got a lot of tips in the videos. And I'm going to start picking a bait, you know, around every Tuesday. It might not be like this type of series where, you know, I pick crankbaits this week, next week, I'm going to pick jerk baits. The next week, I'm going to pick deep diving crankbaits. It might be a little bit different as in rearranging my boat, you know, um, cleaning the boat up, showing you where my tackle is, different type of boat tour. It might be something different, but every Tuesday, I'm going to try to keep something tackle oriented. So, um, but this week's Tackle Tuesday is going to be over square bill crankbaits. Let's go ahead and hop into the video. As you guys can tell in this box, I got a ton of different styles of square bill crankbaits, tons of different colors, and there's reasons why I have all that. You know, you have some like a 1.5 KVD, and then you go to like a 5.0 or an 8.0, and there's reasons why you had those. You know, some of them go different depth, some of them have a tighter wobble, some of them have a wider wobble. Um, the whole color reasons, I'm gonna go ahead and start off that with the first thing, is you know, I have a lot of these red style crawfish colored square bills in here. And the red ones I really love to use in dirty water. That's just, you know, my favorite bait to pick up. Say the water is very stained, very muddy, always gonna pick up like a red crankbait. Um, like say I go out to the Savannah River, water is very stained. Red's always my favorite color for stained water. Um, that's one of my favorite things. If I'm going into like a shad color, it's gonna be because the water's moderately clear, pretty clear. Um, for a good example, Lake Lanier is very, very clear. I'd always use a shad color on Lanier. I would never just randomly pick up a red color crankbait. But then again on Hartwell you have, you know, clear water but it's semi-stained and I've actually caught them good on a red crankbait there. So it all depends on the time of year as well. You know, if you're looking towards the fall where the fish are chewing on a lot of bait, you're most likely going to be using a natural colored shad bait anyways um, as your presentation. Moving on to different styles of square bills as in, you know, big, big or small square bills, it all depends on how deep of water you're fishing. So when I throw a square bill, I tend to throw it in around I'd say two to six foot of water. I wouldn't really go much over that um, or under that. You know, you, if, you, if you're fishing in like a half a foot of water, you're gonna get a lot of stuff on the bait. Um, if you're fishing it deeper than, you know, six, seven, eight foot, I mean, you're probably not even gonna be hitting the bottom anyways. One rule that I really like with the square bill, yes, you can free throw it, have it going through the water. But when I throw a square bill and when I throw a crankbait in general, I'm really wanting to hit structure. So say I pull up on a spot, has a lot of riprap, has a lot of rock, Every time I throw that, I'm going to want that thing to be digging down in that rock. That's very important. And I swear it keys you off to so many more bites. So you're just throwing it. Say you're paralleling a bank and you're throwing down the edge of it. And you're not landing directly on the bank where you're just a few foot off. And you're actually landing a few foot off of that bank. And not perfectly parallel with it. I mean, I've seen it days like that where you won't even get a bite. So very important that you throw this bait in areas where it's actually going to be hitting structure. What's really good about a square ball as well is when you move to trees and brush piles, you can actually run this thing right next and right in the brush piles. So, you know, you can slightly bump it. Say I'm reeling it and I feel a tree, you know, just slightly creep it, creep it over there, kind of like stop and reeling, pop the rod, it'll go through it, fine. So the rod and reel combo, also line. I'm going to start off with the line. If I'm going to be fishing this thing around a lot of structure, around a lot of trees, um, rock. I am gonna want a little bit more thicker line. So say I get some something stuck in the tree or if I'm fishing around submerged grass as well, I'm gonna want a little bit more thicker line. I would tend to stick around 15 to 17 pound line. I'm not a big fan of jumping over 17 to 20 pound. At that point, it gets really thick, depending on the brand line you use. Um, but I actually use Seaguar fluorocarbon. Um, that's all I use, the Invisex, which is like the yellow label that they make phenomenal um, but on a square bill if I'm fishing a lot of structure 15 to 17 pound if I'm just regularly throwing a square bill on a normal day I would prefer like 12 pound line 10 to 12 um, but to be on the safe safe side 12 pounds perfect um, for a square bill crankbait moving on to the reel is a 7 3 to 3 gear ratio reel people talk about 5 to 1 gear ratio reels 8 1 to 1 gear ratio reels. I usually just keep it moderate. You know, 7 3 to 1 gear ratio reel or 7 3 to 3 gear ratio reel um, is perfectly fine. It's all on how you get used to the reel. You know, you can move it fast if you want to, you can move it slow if you want to. It's all on how you're controlling the bait. So I usually stick to the moderate um, style of reel. So moving on to the rod, this is actually a medium heavy. 
I also throw this on like a medium medium rod if I want a little bit more tip if I want a little bit more light like kind of like a jerk bait rod but preferably just my personal preference is like this is a Martin APC um, this is a Kuma TCS tournament concept series rod and this is a seven foot medium heavy that's just me personally that's what I like that's what I'm comfortable with and I feel like it has just enough backbone and just enough tip for me to get the bait out there work it through structure and actually puncture the fish with the hook that's gonna be it for this video guys if you guys enjoyed this Tuesday's Tackle Tuesday. Be sure to smash the like button. If you guys want to see more of these, be sure to let me know below. I want to see every single one of you guys comment something below on what type of bait you want me to talk over next. And also just talk about, you know, what type of tackle videos you want to see and if you actually enjoy the series that's going to be coming up. Also be sure to smash that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. And be sure to hit the little bell so it sends you post notifications. Overall, thank you guys so much for the support. Hope you learned a lot about square bills today. I'll catch you guys in the next one.